German defense company Rheinmetall is positioning its Sky Ranger air defense system at the center of Europe's response to the growing threat from drones, cruise missiles, and high-precision strikes, signaling a major shift in how the continent plans to defend its skies. What began as a niche modular solution has rapidly evolved into a flagship project with the potential for more than 1,000 systems to be fielded across several nations. Germany is expected to become the primary customer, with discussions indicating that several hundred Skyranger-equipped vehicles may be integrated into the Bundeswehr's force structure over the coming years as part of its broader rearmament and modernization drive. This emerging fleet is not just about numbers, it reflects a fundamental change in strategic thinking. European states have watched in real time as modern conflicts demonstrated the destructive efficiency of cheap loitering munitions, mass drone strikes, and low-flying cruise missiles. These weapons expose a critical vulnerability, traditional high-end missile systems are too expensive and too few in number to be expended against every small or slow aerial target. Sky Ranger is designed precisely to fill that gap, offering a mobile, layered, and cost-effective solution that can accompany troops, protect infrastructure, and operate continuously without exhausting national stockpiles of strategic interceptors. In Germany's case, Sky Ranger is closely tied to the expansion of boxer-based platforms and a broader vision of creating a resilient national and allied air defense framework. By integrating Sky Ranger turrets onto proven armor chassis, Berlin aims to field a network of highly mobile units capable of protecting maneuver brigades, logistics convoys, bridges, depots, and command posts. The ambition is to transition from a model in which air defense is concentrated in a limited number of static sites to one in which protection can move with the force and rapidly adapt to shifting threats. This approach aligns with NATO's evolving doctrine, which emphasizes dispersed operations, survivability, and the ability to counter saturation attacks across multiple axes. Technically, Sky Ranger is built around a modular philosophy. The system can be configured with 30mm or 35mm cannons firing programmable airburst ammunition, optimized to intercept drones, rockets, or low-flying munitions by detonating at a calculated point along the trajectory. In many configurations, it can be paired with short-range missiles to extend engagement envelopes, while advanced radar and electro-optical sensors enable all-weather surveillance, automatic target tracking, and precise fire control. The combination of guns, smart ammunition, and optional missiles gives commanders flexibility, they can match the cost and type of interceptor to the seriousness and complexity of the threat, rather than relying on a one-size-fits-all missile solution. The confidence behind the Sky Ranger initiative is reinforced by real battlefield experience. Its related system, using similar gun technology and programmable ammunition, has already been tested under combat conditions against hostile drones and other aerial threats. These operational results support the central premise behind Rainmetal's concept, massed low-cost threats are best countered by layered defenses in which rapid-firing guns play a central role, with missiles reserved for high-value or more sophisticated targets. Instead of advertising an unproven prototype, the company is leveraging lessons from ongoing conflicts to refine engagement algorithms, sensor integration, logistic models, and crew procedures for Sky Ranger deployments. For potential European customers, the attractiveness of Sky Ranger is not purely technical. It intersects with political and industrial priorities, strengthening domestic production, building long term supply chains, and reducing dependency on external suppliers for critical defense capabilities. A program involving hundreds of units creates predictable demand for ammunition, electronics, vehicles, and maintenance services, encouraging investments in local facilities and joint ventures. This promises not only enhanced security but also economic and technological returns, making it easier for governments to justify large-scale procurements to their parliaments and taxpayers. At the operational level, Introducing Skyranger-type systems on a large scale would transform how European militaries plan and conduct air defense. Rather than viewing protection as a static umbrella above fixed sites, planners would gain tools to create overlapping, mobile, microbubbles, of defense wherever needed. 
Convoys moving along exposed routes could be accompanied by organic air defense. Field headquarters could be shielded without relying exclusively on a small number of high-value batteries. Critical infrastructure, from fuel depots to power nodes, could be defended by dispersed units that are harder to detect and suppress. This agility complicates an adversary's targeting calculus and increases the overall resilience of the defense network. Economics remain one of the strongest arguments in favor of Skyranger's widespread adoption. In a world where state and non-state actors can launch swarms of inexpensive drones, any country that tries to respond only with costly interceptors risks strategic exhaustion. Gun-based systems with programmable ammunition offer significantly lower cost per shot while maintaining high lethality against small aerial targets. When integrated into modern command and control networks, they can receive early warning from higher-tier sensors, prioritize incoming threats, and engage only those targets best suited for their capabilities. This not only conserves resources but ensures that missile-based systems remain available for the most demanding scenarios. Still, the path ahead is not without obstacles. Turning conceptual demand into firm orders requires political will, consistent funding, and harmonization of requirements among different countries. Some states may prioritize national alternatives or delay decisions due to budgetary pressures. Integrating a new generation of mobile air defense systems also requires training specialized crews, upgrading digital infrastructure, and aligning doctrines that have, in many cases, underemphasized short-range air defense for decades. Any slowdown or fragmentation could reduce economies of scale and complicate interoperability, risks that European defense planners are increasingly conscious of. Nevertheless, the momentum behind mobile, layered air defense is unmistakable. Strategic shocks, repeated attacks on critical infrastructure, and the visible effectiveness of drone warfare have created a rare consensus that existing models are inadequate. In this environment, Rainmetal's Skyranger has emerged as more than just another platform on the market. It is becoming a symbol of Europe's attempt to adapt its defense posture to the realities of 21st century conflict, fast, networked, saturated, and unforgiving to those who neglect the lower tiers of their airspace. If the projected demand for over a thousand Skyranger systems materializes in the coming years, it will mark a structural shift in European security policy. It would signal that governments are prepared not only to acknowledge the evolving threat landscape but to invest at scale in practical solutions that can be fielded quickly, sustained over time, and integrated across allied forces. The success or failure of this effort will shape how credibly Europe can protect its forces, territory, and infrastructure against the air and drone threats that are no longer hypothetical, but a defining feature of modern warfare.